Hey, this is Kevin Kitchens with Once Upon a Game, and today we're going to look at an unboxing or an unbagging, I guess it were, of Sticks and Stones, the uh, Mark Walker World War IV platoon level combat game, Tiny Battle Publishing. Uh, so, let's just take a look and see what's in this one. I've looked at a few other of uh, the uh, Tiny Battle games, and uh, it's a big fun, tiny package. Let's open it up real quick, take a look. Your portfolio games that I'll immediately put into a small box of some sort, a candy box or something. So let's see what we got here. The title card, which is actually the cover of the rule book, which is kind of cool. Nice full color um, rule book. You'll need to provide your own D6. That's one of the things of Tiny Battle, their portfolio series, is you provide your own dice. Uh, never seems to tell you how many you need. Just numerous six-sided dice. So, but, very good quality. Uh, looks very glossy paper. Uh, not glossy, uh, coated. It's a nice coated paper. Some beautiful artwork in the book. Uh, rule book, it's 16, uh, 16 pages, counting the back, um, back's just a summary, so it's not a, uh, player aid or anything like that. Um, rules go up to page 10, scenarios start on page 11, one, two, three, Four scenarios. Okay. Good quality. Definitely very nice material. Uh, advertising for some of the other titles. Uh, sequence play chart. Very thick coated cardstock. Very nice. Terrain effects. Double sided. Fire results table. Uh, range color. Explanation. It's probably make a lot more sense, obviously, after reading the rules. Definitely a new system. Uh, so, close assault, fire results, terrain effects, various terrain types on the bottom, and some additional notes about the terrain. The map. It's, uh, let's see, it's about 11. It's about a 17 by 22 map. Good, thick quality. Single sided. Uh, very reminiscent of his uh, uh, Eisenbach uh, World at War series. You've got the basic terrain, the uh, areas defined, cities uh, spelled out on the map in large print. Um, Good quality, a little thin. Uh, just open this one. It's got a little bit of flecking here on the. Uh, I don't know if you can see that there. A little whiting happening on the crease, but you know, for as much as you're going to use this, and you're probably going to put it under plexi. Uh, it's a serviceable map. And now we get the counters. Counters come in their own bag. Very thin sheet. Um, this is probably, in my experience, has been kind of the weak point with the Tiny Battle games is the counters. Um, I'll cover some others in their reviews. They tend to punch pretty good. The uh, registration on them is is pretty pretty spot on here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they all mean here until we play. But one thing they've done, and I showed this on another uh, unbagging I did that did not the microphone died on me. So this one's actually fresh. Is I'll try to show you here they they 
they uh, cut them so that they're not actually, they're cut cleanly between the lines, which is fine. So they kind of open like a barn door here, the, the row of two. But the problem is then they're attached not to the corners as you'd expect, but they got the little nub here on the side. I don't know if you can see that or not. So the problem comes in is you can't corner clip, you can corner clip, but you can't get rid of the nub, which is usually attached on the corners. So even though you get clean corners and you don't get that little bit of uh, flash that, you know, drags other counters around on the map, it's hard to get rid of that. It's hard to get, hard to remove that very easily. You can see it doesn't really, so. As a clipper myself, using the corner rounder, um, I like that to be on the edge because then when I corner around them, they all uh, they all come out nice and clean. So one thing I found I tried to do is just take this over, use a uh, roller cutter, just drop it down in this groove and slice them. Give them a good slice along the edge to try to get most of that away. The only problem is you're taking a risk that sometimes that that uh, rotary cutter wants to possibly jump the track or just slightly get a skew and clip off a little edge and so far it hasn't mattered because there have not been secret counters where it would mean anything and I haven't lost any valuable information but uh, anyway just something to think about if that's important to you once they're once they're out they're okay they're definitely kind of a stacked paper they don't seem to be a solid core and sometimes you may notice that they're the way the cut went, it went kind of at an angle, so they've got a little bevel there that sometimes you'll see white as you're looking down. Uh, it's not an aesthetic thing as much as a, a worry about separation. But I don't know that these are necessarily games you're going to be playing for a long time. This is the first one I've gotten that has cards, so we're going to take a look at those real quick. As I use my teeth to my mother's chagrin. Sorry. 50 year habit. Cards appear to be events. Lucky day, reroll it to four defensive dice. Either events or uh, control cards again. Brand new to this system. Appear to be several repeats. Eager, lucky day, fire support. Play it to get plus two firepower. Hell no. Negates the last card played by the opposing player. Now the cards I like. Cards seem to be pretty darn good quality. They're thick. Like a thicker coated cardstock. So I do I do like those. They'll definitely be sleeved because there's so few. Uh, they'll be easier to shuffle. Kind of a black and white sticks and stones uh, logo and full color. Uh, obviously the cards have the American side and the Russian side. So anyway, that is what you get. A sheet of counters, a stack of cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 cards. Map. Sequence of play. Player aid. And a very nice rule book. So, definitely looking forward to getting this one on the table to do a review very soon. So, that's what you get in the package. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.